What we've discovered over the past 10 or so years is that you need sleep after learning to essentially hit the save button on those new memories so that you don't forget. So sleep essentially future proofs those facts within the brain. But recently we've discovered that you not only need sleep after learning, you also need sleep before learning. It's a, it's a delight and privilege to be here. And I would like to start with testicles. Men who sleep five hours a night have significantly smaller testicles than those who sleep eight hours or more. In addition, men who routinely sleep five to six hours a night will have a level of testosterone which is that of someone 10 years their senior. So a lack of sleep ages you by a decade in terms of that aspect, that critical aspect of wellness and virility. And we see equivalent impairments in female reproductive health caused by a lack of sleep. This is the best news that I have for you today. <laughs> um, from this point forward, it's only going to get worse. Rather than tell you about the wonderfully good things that happen when you get sleep, I'm going to tell you about the alarmingly bad things that happen when you don't get enough, both for the brain and for the body. Um, let me start with the brain and the functions of learning and memory. What we've discovered over the past 10 or so years is that you need sleep after learning to essentially hit the save button on those new memories so that you don't forget. So sleep essentially future proofs those facts within the brain. But recently we've discovered that you not only need sleep after learning, you also need sleep before learning. But now to actually prepare your brain, I'm almost like a dry sponge ready to initially soak up new information. And without sleep, the memory circuits of the brain effectively become waterlogged as it were and you can't absorb new information. So here in this study, we decided to test the hypothesis that pulling the all-nighter was a good idea. How do you do that? Well, we took a group of healthy adults and we assigned them to one of two experimental conditions, a sleep group and a sleep deprivation group. Now the sleep group, they're going to get a full eight hours of shut-eye but the deprivation group, we're going to keep them awake in the laboratory under full supervision. Um, there's no naps, there's no caffeine. It's miserable uh, for everyone included, us as well. And then the next day, we're going to place those participants inside an MRI scanner. And we're going to have them try and learn a whole list of new facts as we're taking snapshots of brain activity. And then we're going to test them to see how effective that learning has been. And that's what you're looking at here on the vertical axis, the amount of learning. So the higher up you are, the more that you learn. And when you put those two groups head to head, what you find is a quite significant 40% deficit in the ability of the brain to make new memories without sleep. And I think this should be frightening considering what we know is happening to sleep in our education populations right now. Just to frame this in context, it would be the difference between acing an exam and failing it miserably. And we've gone on to discover what goes wrong within your brain to produce these types of learning disabilities. There is a structure on the left and the right side of your brain called the hippocampus. And you can see it here in these sort of orange yellow colors. Think of the hippocampus like the informational inbox of your brain. It's very good at receiving new memory files and holding on to them. And when we looked at this structure in those people who'd had a full night of sleep here in green, we saw lots of healthy learning related activity. Yet in those people who were sleep deprived, we actually couldn't find any significant signal whatsoever. It's almost as though sleep deprivation 
had shut down the memory inbox and any new incoming files, they were just being bounced. You couldn't effectively commit new experiences to memory. Thank you. Thank you so much.